Shalom, Shalom, Gashirala. Want to start off first things first, giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rakakadash, which in the Paleo Hebrew tongues, correct name of the Heavenly Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS. And Shalom, the sister brothers living this true. And Shalom to the brothers and sisters listening and standing to show themselves approved. Shalom. Turn the music down a little bit. I don't want that to drown me out. You know. So I want to start this lesson off, man, by talking about a World War III update, what's going on right now. And what's happening, because that's a big topic. I noticed uh, they're using their entertainment to cover it up. I used to better look at my news feed and catch all kind of, you know, political and economic things that's going on. And now when I open it up, I just want to talk about, you know, sports and entertainment and celebrities. So Esau, you know, it's a lot of things going on right now. These Babylonians, you know, the American Edomites, they taking L. So they trying to distract what they say, uh, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. So, but hey, the prophecy's out. We're going to shed light on it. And we got a major, major prophecy happening right now in our face, which is World War III. And it's looking like, hey, this thing is about to happen. Ain't like it's going to kick up and dust off. No, man. It looks like Vladimir Putin, Russia's president, he making his move. And the, America is trying to calm everybody down. They're trying to like, you know, we got it. He ain't going to do that that bad. Uh, we're going to put severe sanctions on him. They think that's going to stop it. But I'm here to tell you that them sanctions ain't going to have no effect on Russia whatsoever because he's already worked his way around the sanctions. Like, he's getting ready to make his move. He's getting ready for war. And how you can see that is uh, something that most people don't know about. You got the BRICS nations. Like, a lot of big nations that, get, that got economic power, they have all, you know, joined together. They're all in one pot. And I got an article right here that's going to briefly talk about it. And this article is back in 2018. You see, April 25th, 2018. And I'm going to start it out. It says, once seen as edging out U.S. dominance, do bricks still hold weight? <laughs> that was back then. You best believe they hold weight, man. That's the reason why dude can make the moves that he about to make. So it says, this year marks a decade since bricks. Once hurled as the biggest challenge of the U.S. global hegemony, first came together in the ashes of, of the economic crisis. But today, expectations have been tempered. Is the group still relevant? You know, and uh, you can read about it. You know, it got a little stuff right here, but I want to hit the high points of the article. So I'm going to go down to when it when it started, cause what, what the BRICS is. You know, a lot of people, you know, you add your average Israelite, they don't know what that is. They don't know what's going on. Check it out. This is the rise of BRICS. In 2001, it started this 2001 now, the BRIC acronym was dreamed up by then Goldman Sachs chief economics Jim O'Neill, who described the emerging economies of Brazil, Russia, India, and China. And later, South Africa was added in 2011. So that's why it's called BRICS. Those countries right there have combined their, their economies, you know, and... You know, all really, all Russia really need, really, the key thing in there is China. That's all he really need, because China really is the number one, you know, economic power in our day. It's no longer America. It's China. You know, over here in America, they just don't want to say that. And that's another reason why all this dust up is happening. You know, Babylon the Great, America has really fallen off. You know, the uh, we got supply chain issues. Uh, it's a consumer nation. We don't produce nothing. Uh, China is the number one producer. Lock you. China is the number one producer, you know, that's that makes everything. So really, they're the number one superpower as far as the economic standpoint goes, you know. Now, Babylon Great still has that sword, you know, a great military that, you know, kind of got people looking like that. But really, these, these nations right here, Russia and China, they ready to go head up with Babylon the Great America. And that's biblical, because that's really what we're looking at is the beginning of World War III. You know, we're looking at that. So, uh, hold on, let me, uh, go to do not disturb so that won't happen again. No damn spam callers. So back to what we were talking about, man. Talking about these brick nations. You know, uh, 
What's one I want to point to? I think I, I think that's enough. I'm gonna read through that. Uh, you can go up here if you want to read the article. It's the Open Canada. Or you can just put in BRICS nations, and you can read all about them. I just want to pull that out to show you who they are and what they represent. You know, uh, this says right here represent 44 percent of the world's population, has accounted for half of the global growth since the group's foreign ministers first met in 2008. You know, since 2008, this thing been going on, man. They've been back and forth trading. And because of that, you know, uh, Vladimir Putin, he, he he did a workaround. He no longer needs the U.S. dollar to sustain his country. And he's also getting his oil export. You know, we had we had a, a, a strong profit in the truth. You how the Maccabees, he did a lesson two years back. Vladimir Putin did a deal with Saudi Arabia in order to get his oil. So he no longer needs oil exports from the U.S. So he don't need the money and he don't need the oil. So he don't care about no sanctions because he don't even need you. He's working with, you know, other nations to get what he needs. So I'm going to pull up another uh, article. And you can you can read that on your own, you know. Uh, what I'm going to pull up right here. I'm going to pull this up. This is Reuters. You know, this is back in June 3rd. It says Russian rainy day fund to get out of all U.S. dollar assets. So a lot of these countries are no longer dealing with the U.S. dollar. And you know that's true. That's why we have inflation right now. That's why everything's going up because these other countries are not dealing with the dollar no more. They say, give me gold. They dealing with gold, you know, or the euro. They're no longer dealing with Babylon the Great and what he got to provide because they're, they're, they're tired of Babylon the Great America. So check it out. We're going to read a little bit of this. It says Russia on Thursday said it would ditch all U.S. dollar assets in its national wealth fund and increase holdings in euros, Chinese yuan, and gold in what analysts said was a political move ahead of a presidential Russian U.S. summit later this month. So check that out. He's dealing with the, the euro. He's dealing with the, the Chinese yuan and he's dealing with gold. They don't want the dollar no more. The dollar is losing its power every single day. It's losing its purchasing power because, you know, Babylon fell out. Mismanagement, man. They kept uh, outsourcing all the companies, all the jobs. All the good jobs went overseas. They made those other countries where the jobs went stronger. They made this country weaker. So they set themselves up a long time ago to take this fall that they're dealing with. So I want to, uh, let's keep on reading. Russia has been gradually reducing its dollar holdings since the imposition of Western sanctions following Moscow's annexation of Crimea in 2014 and has sought to partially decouple from the Western financial system. See, the backs of what I've just said right there, man. Uh, this happened in 2014. He's been seeking to get out of the U.S. dollar since then because he's been wanting to make his move. So you think here we are in 2022. He set up. He set up for war. That's why you got warships uh, hanging off the coast of, 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 of Babylon, the great America. You got um, troops all around Ukraine. He about to take Ukraine back. Ukraine about to go back under Russia rulership. You know, he's talking through the spirit straight up. He, he coming for it. And uh, they they hey they they botched this thing, man. They looking Babylon the Great looking crazy, man. They used to go off of uh, that fear fact, you know. Everybody scared of the bully on the block, cause he done beat up whoop the whoop back in the day, and everybody gonna go against him, cause he this this and that. Hey, now they look. He done got older, uh, you know. The, the right ain't quick, so these other countries looking like, hey man, it's our time. We ain't scared of this bully no more. They been lifting weights, uh, getting their muscle up, practicing, and they ready to fight. And it's all biblical, man. It was all biblical that this was going to happen. World War III was prophesied to happen. And, and we're going to go, let's get, let's hop into the scriptures. Let's hop into the scriptures, man, to talk about this. And where I want to start at, let's start at uh, Jeremiah 51 and 5. Because it's talking about us, man, and, and why this place got to go down. This place is getting judged for what it did. To his people, the nation of Israel, you know, uh, Esau, particularly this country, Babylon, Great America, did a lot of great offenses to, you know, not only the southern tribe, Judah, but also Israel, which contains your northern tribe, you know, your Native Americans, uh, your Hispanics, your Latinos, because they own the west part of it. And the Native Americans is over here, too. So, hey, they, they, everybody's been offended by this country, man. They stole this land, took the gold, uh, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is uh, Puerto Rico goes into Port Rich. 
Puerto Rico was made of nothing but gold. And Esau, in the form of the Spaniards, conquistadors, came over and took it all. And they didn't, they do that everywhere they go. So now we we in the time where they're about to get their judgment for that. So check it out, we're gonna go to Jeremiah 51 and 5. But Israel have not been forsaken, nor Judah of, of his Yahweh, of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. So let's break down that precept we just read right there. Basically, what they're saying is like the most high is not forsaken his people. He ain't forgot about us. You know, he let Esau have his way with us for a long time, but he hasn't forgotten. Especially now, you know, you got a, a small portion of our nation calling on his name, you know, the Paleo Hebrew tongue, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah, and turning back to the lost commandments and getting back right. So with that man said, you know, the most high said, when you do that, I will hear you and I will hear your land. So that's why Babylon the Great is getting this big judgment because the prophets are out, the truth is spreading like wildfire, and this place is about to get it, man. The Most High is hearing us, you know? And then I'm going to hit six, which is a big point. It says, flee out the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Hear that? Recompense goes into payback. America, Babylon the Great, along with the nation that rules it, Esau Edom is about to get a great payback. You know, the, the nations, the beast system is now about to turn on this whore. You know, and the most house telling us to flee out to Mr. Babylon. Now, is that saying like, you know, get out the country physically, flee up out of here? No, man, we've been spread to this place. You know, he said, occupy till I come. Now we're at the point where the chariots got to come get us. So when he said flee, out of Babylon, that means depart from this place spiritually and depart from this place mentally. And how do you do that? You meditate on these scriptures, man. You get back into the law of such commandments. You get back to your high holy days. You get back into know doing what the most high commanded us to do. That's how you flee this place, man. Get your faith up. You know? And it says, be not cut off in her iniquity. This place is wicked, man. It, uh, it represents LGBT community. Uh, if you just think about Babylon, the great America, it, and you know the law, such commandments, it, it's, it goes against all the laws. You know, pork is a big time delicacy here to be ate. Uh, shrimp and lobster, you know, take a chick out to eat seafood, you the man. You know, that's why the sea all messed up. We eating crab and shrimp by the tons. So the cleaning crew can't clean the ocean. The most high said don't eat that. So this is a place where abominable food is ate. This is the place where a lot of Israelites' blood was shed. From like I said earlier, all the tribes, you know, uh, they block us out economically where we can't really do nothing to uh, be a nation. We don't get no sovereignty. You know, this whole place is against us and it's against our, our power. Yahweh was shy. Therefore, you know, we at the point where he's at the peak of his wickedness. Therefore, at the peak of it, hey, ain't no left place to go now is the do is the fall. So they, they wickedness has reached up to the heavens. Yahweh has heard it. We prophesied against this place, and now the judgment's been set place. And World War III is part of that judgment. That's part of the destruction of Babylon the Great. Because that's when those arrows, which goes to those ICBM thermonuclear missiles, are going to be shot, and it's going to destroy this place. That's where you're going to get your hell at, your lake of fire. This place is going to get hit with so many missiles, it's going to be a straight melting place, a straight fire, fervent heat, going to burn this place up. So check it out. That's payback for what you did to the Most High and, and to his people. And you think about it, too. You go back to the Romans. Who were they? They were Edomites. Who did they uh, uh, kill? You know, who did they destroy? They destroyed Yahweh, our Savior. You know, he let them do it, but they did it. They got to pay for that. You know, that's why Yahweh coming back with them dyed garments of Basra, man. He coming back for, for, for blood. So check it out. We'll go to seven. Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. They made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. That's why Russia is mad. China is mad. Iran is mad. Africa is mad. All these nations are mad at Babylon the Great. And this is like scripture that said, why? Because they had to drink of, of, of fornication, of wine, which weakens you. Because everything... Babylon the Great America promotes will really destroy you, man. It's really destruction is what they promote. Death, you know, uh, uh, making people adopt that LGBT, man. Them other countries don't play that, you know. Plus, these other countries seen what Babylon the Great America did to the Middle East. 
Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iraq. That everybody seen that, you know? And and, and it's going to be everybody like, man, you, hey, I wish you would come over here with that. And then you uh, you trying to make me accept your philosophy. No, man, we don't play that. We, we trying to promote, you know, reproduction. We trying to promote, you know, babies over here. You trying to promote death and alternate lifestyle that's really sickening. So get out of here with that. So that's why Babylon the Great got to go down. That's that uh, made her drink of the wine. It goes into philosophy. Wine goes into philosophy. You know, ideology, laws. And, you know, America does spread its wickedness all over the earth. You know, the land is given to the hand of the wicked. So, hey, they, they got to go, man. That's what see been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. And he, he's mad. So check it out. We're going to go to eight. Babylon is sudden fallen and destroyed. How for her take palm for her pain? If so be, she may be healed. You know, you hear that? If so, she may be healed. You know, because if, if, if Edomites would step aside and let Israelites rule, Babylon the Great would be healed because we the ones that have, you know, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Uh, we the ones that have the compassion, the love in our hearts. We're the ones that's caring. We do things that's beneficial. We're the husbandmen. We take care of things. We grow things. Esau destroys things. They're really like mad scientists. You know, that's why I can't be healed because they won't move out the way. Anytime we, we come into a position of power to do something good, what they do, they knock them off every single time. Look at every celebrity. That's why they can't do nothing. That's why your celebrities will never save nothing because they can't because Esau rule everything. So check it out. This is going to back me up even more. Number nine, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country. For a judgment reaching up to heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. You hear that? Say we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. They're not going to move out the way. They're not going to stop being wicked. Therefore, Babylon's, hey, the only thing left now is destruction. You know, place got to go. That's why I said forsake her. So we should not still be stuck in an American mindset or trying to do American things. You know, we, we shouldn't be on that. We should be looking for the kingdom of heaven. Now, we still got to do what we need to do to, you know, maintain what we got. But the kingdom should be the number one thing in your mind, the forefront. You should be looking for righteousness and looking for the kingdom of heaven because any American thing is not going to work now. We already did that. Bring your dollar together. Try to get some land with Black Wall Street, Black Panthers. None of that worked, man. So now, only thing left is to look for our Lord and Savior, Howard Shaw, because he's coming quickly. And I, I like to, to bring it up. It said, let us go everyone into his own country. We don't have a country anymore. Our country is, is, is filled with what? Edomites. The Jewish. They in there. You know? So we don't have any more sovereignty. So now we're at the point where we need Yahabashi Shah to, you know, beam us up in them chariots. And then once everything is destroyed and, and you know, he done, you know, plastered this place with hot fire, then we're going to come down, you know, and, and, and regrow everything. Then everything is going to be healed because then we're going to take up rulership at that time, you know. So the, the, the flea really did this country, man, is the, the flea is spiritually and mentally in your mind. And then look for your how about your shot to gather us up before destruction comes. That's why it's very vital, important to have this truth, man, to be a wise virgin, have your oil burning so them chariots can pick you up. So you won't, cause you you we not going, you not going uh, any other way. You are not going to escape this nuclear fire, man. These missiles, they got a lot of missiles. These missiles gonna go off and blow everything up, cause it's gonna start off with little, you know, infantry warfare, but at the end it's gonna climax into nuclear warfare. That's what's gonna happen, and it's gonna happen because it says for a judgment reaching unto heaven, and it's lifted up even to the sky. So the the judgment of the brothers out here prophesying. You know, and pointing out the iniquities of, of Edom, it has reached up to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah. And now what's left is the judgment. You know, we're doing something that our people weren't doing 20, 30 years ago on a big level. Now this truth is out here and this it's blowing up, man. You got like thousands of Hebrew Israelite camps all over the all over the world pushing this word out. Now it's, you know. It's only one camp that got the spirit of prophecy, and that's Great Millstone GMS, but the rest do put us out the vibration of Hebrew Israelite. So the, the, the knowledge of who we are is getting pushed out. Now, depending on how much of the spirit is in you, you're going to find your way to the true men who have the true prophecy, and that way you can get fed up and get this true. 
So check it out. I want to, oh, I want to read this one too. We're going to go to uh, 51 to 11. And that read, that's going to back up what I said too. It says, make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord have raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes for his devices against Babylon to destroy it because of the vengeance of the Lord and the vengeance of his temple. Woo! Hey, that precept right there, that, that's the main precept right there on this lesson right here because it said, you know, make bright the arrows. What's them arrows? Oh, and they ain't bright. That's the missiles. The missiles are going to get shot, you know? And it said, raise up the spirit of kings of Medes. Who's the Mede right now? Man, that's Vladimir Putin. That's Russia right now. Those are your Medes, man. And they have been raised up and they vengeance is on. It says for this device against Babylon to destroy you. So Russia, which is your, your modern day Medes, your, uh, uh, your Russians, they've been risen up. And that's why they've been given a great military because that military is going to destroy the American military. And they're going to have help from China, Iran, and all these other nations, North Korea, um, who, whoever got nukes, man, going to get in with Russia and they're going to attack Babylon the Great, which is America. And that right there, that precept, hey, that, that, that sums it up right there big time, man. It said make bright the arrows. I love that. I ain't read that precept in a minute. I forgot how spot on it was. That's why I brought it out. And I like said, raise up the spirit of the king of Medes. Hey, Vibrant Putin's spirit been raised up, man. He been making uh, chess moves. So that he can make this move that he's making now. That's why that sanction they put on uh, Russia, that ain't about to stop nothing, man. He already got his money put up. He already got the oil he needs. It's wartime. World War III is going to kick off, you know, either this year or next year. You know, the little sanction ain't going to do nothing. And it's coming. Because they, they tired of this place. You know, they did too much. And really, he, he's, he's an Edomite. You know, that just shows you that's Esau versus Esau. The devil versus the devil. Only reason he getting raised up is because of everything that the U.S. did to, you know, Russia. They didn't forget about that. So that's the most high raging spirit up in them Edomites to come up against the other set of Edomites. The same thing will happen over here in Babylon the Great. We're looking at a civil war. You know, you got the, the southern states versus the northern states, man. You got the rich Edomite versus the, the poor Edomite. You know, they, they, Esau about to bang against himself, man. That's the Egyptian versus the Egyptian. You know, and the devil is divided uh, against itself. That's why his kingdom ain't going to stand. That's why, really, America about to go down. This is the last little hooray for alcohol. Last call for alcohol for Babylon the Great. That's why, hey, you better not have your dreams in this place. You're going to be surely disappointed. Check it out. I want to hit up Jeremiah 51 and 45. My people, go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the first anger of the Lord. You hear that? The Most High is angry at Babylon the Great. And he's angry at Esau, Edomites. He hate Edomites, man. He coming, hey, he coming, he bringing the whole, everything like, like the, the people he made, the people Yahweh made gonna bang on Babylon the Great. And then when Yahweh shall show up and he bring that heavenly host, that heavenly army, man, they gonna show out too. This place is gonna be this totally demolished. There's no way Babylon the, Great, Babylon the Great gonna come out of this victorious at all. So I'm gonna keep on reading 46. Unless your heart faint and yea, fear for the rumor that should be heard in the land, a rumor shall both come out, come one, Salakia, come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor. And violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Did you hear that? Rumor after rumor shall both come one year after that in another year. So if it don't pop off this year, for sure it's going to pop off next year, man. We at the doorstep of this thing. Vladimir Putin is making this move. And it said ruler against ruler, you know. Uh, when you look at it, uh, uh, Joe Biden, which I think he's going to lose. It's probably going to be Kamala Harris when this thing pop off. That Going against Vladimir Putin, that's ruler against ruler, you know. Then once, you know, China and Russia bomb on uh, Babylon the Great, they might start looking at each other like, you know, who, who going who gonna to rule now? Who going to be number one? But really... You know, through the spirit, Yahweh Shah going to show up. When Yahweh Shah going to show up, they all going to try to fight him. And that's when he going to knock off everybody. And he going to say, Yasharala going to rule Israel. So that's what we got to look forward to. But right now, these countries are about to fight each other. World War Three is going to pop off. And it's, I'm going to keep on reading on 47. 
you know. And he said, "Don't fear for the rumor that it be heard in the land." We, we, us and the truth, we not we not scared of that, man. We got your high bashing our shot. We got the testimony. We got the names. Um, got our works in to, sh to prove our faith. So we in a good lot. So go to forty-seven. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. You know, uh, uh, warfare is coming on the shores of America. You know, it's coming from the, from the south and from the north. That's why the borders is open. It's coming, you know. And a lot of like, like you look at Edomites, they think that they, they can't be touched. They think Babylon the Great is so strong it can't be touched. And I'm looking like, your country about to get touched, <laughs> whether you like it or not. And they're going to be confounded with it happening because they think they're so strong, but they're not looking at the infrastructure of their military. Their military is weak, you know. They so worried about putting LGBT in the military and, you know, worried about little frivolous stuff. They ain't even important. These other countries done got strong. But the great American done got weak. You know, so you can see it about to happen. And it said to come destroy the graven images of Babylon. That means all that uh, plantation Christianity, sweet baby Jesus, all that about to get burnt up. All the works, your banks going to get burnt up. Your buildings going to get blew up. All these statues of the Edomites about to get blew up. Everything... That Esau has built is about to be destroyed during World War III. You know? And we're going to go to 48. Then the heaven and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon. For the spoiler shall come unto her from the north, said the Lord. And who said? It said the spoiler shall come unto her from the north. When you look at Russia, you know, Russia is on the north, is in the north. When you look on that side of the continent on the east, Russia is at the top of that. Russia is over there by Europe. It's at the top. You know, so that's true. It is going to come from the north, man. That northern king, man, that represents Russia. And it's and show coming, man. And then we're going to, like, read this next scripture. going to say, why? It's 49. As Babylon have caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. So because you killed the nation of Israel, guess what? Now it's your turn. It's basically, hey, that, that's a righteous recompense right there. Righteous payback. Payback from way back. That's why this place got to be judged. Plus, it's wickedness. They ain't supposed to be ruling no way. Esau ain't supposed to be, you know, he, the most high didn't want Esau to rule forever. He only set them up for a season. He only set them up because our people went off. And then he wanted the, the generation after that to come back into him and praise him so that we can get back and get the victory, you know? And that's happening now. Other than that, we had did, like I said, the Black Dollar, you know, uh, the, the Black Panthers, you know, all kind of little stuff like Islam tried to, I don't know what they tried to do. Uh, just talk their way into it. Oh, no. Nah, he tried to get get the economic going, get some money going. None of that worked because that wasn't what the Most High wanted. He wanted the way done, the way this book said to do it. To call on him and get back to him and represent him in truth and spirit. That's how he wanted. So let me see if I'm bringing some more out of that. I think that's it right there. That's the point I wanted to hit. I think now I'm going to go to further prove my point. We're going to go to, hey, Jeremiah covered Babylon greatly, boy. <laughs> he he put, he put it strong on our prophet uh, Jeremiah to tell us what's going to happen to America. And it's so, it's so twofold because you had a Babylon back then and then you got a Babylon nowadays because Esau picked up all the Babylonian customs and practices, all the witchcraft they did back then, they still carry it to this day. So all you got to do is look on the back of your $1 bill. You see nothing but witchcraft. Same thing back then. You know, Egypt picked up the same thing Babylon did. That's why it's also called the virgin daughter of Babylon the Great. Because this kingdom with the, the spirit of it will, will persist even to our day now. From the ancient days. So I'm going to go to Jeremiah 50. 50 and... 45. I think that's what I want. Yeah, because it's going to show. Yeah, I want to pull this one out because there's more points I want to pull out this. This is Jeremiah 50 and 45. Therefore, hear ye the counsel of the Lord that ye have taken against Babylon and his purposes that he have purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them you hear that and the chaldeans go back in the ba uh the babylonians you know back then they's calling this up the chaldeans because uh 
That's where our forefather Abraham had to get out of. He had to come out of, uh, from out the Chaldeans. And that, that's another word for these, you might as well say that's a, that's a good word for calling these Edomites to this day. That's who the modern day Chaldeans are, these Edomites. And it said, uh, the Lord to take counsel hey, against Babylon, man. Babylon about to go. And what I, what I want to pull out, why the scripture is so powerful, it says that surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. You hear that? The least of the flock. That means these small countries that really don't have a military like that are going to kick off World War III. You got Ukraine. Ukraine need uh, Babylon the Great America's help to stay afloat. You know, they hollering because they see Russia about to take them over. They ain't got a real strong military like that. Then on the flip side, you look at uh, Taiwan. Taiwan does not does have a strong military presence like that. It's a small country. You know, and China wants Taiwan back. You know, in Taiwan, what they doing? Same thing Ukraine doing. Hollering at America, Babylon the Great to protect them. And uh, China like, nah, we're taking Taiwan back. So you got two countries with, with the same interests in mind. They're trying to take back other countries that belong to them. Only they got annexed is because they had uh, Babylon the Great America gave them the power to do that. Now these other countries like, man, we don't give a damn what America got to say. You're coming back under us or else, you know, by force. You know, we, we'll send missiles to Babylon the Great America if they, you know, want to jump in. And you look at Iran. Iran, if Iran launched one missile over there and hits Israel, everybody's going to war. Because Israel's biggest allies, who? Babylon the Great America. Iran say they about to bomb on Israel. So those Iran is another small country, but they have nuclear capability, you know? So the, the small countries are really what's going to kick this off, the interest of these small countries. Because they're really hollering from help, you know, from uh, Babylon the Great America. Because America is the sword. The, the, the brains and the money is Israel. You know, all the elites, they dwell in Israel, which is our land. But they use America to, you know, uh, uh, get their means across. America is where the, the, the sword is at. You know, that's the bully. That's that's the muscle. You know, you always got to, you know, when you look at it from a, a, a street perspective, you know, you got the little weak, the little, little drug lord dude. You know, he can't really fight nothing like that, but he got like a bunch of henchmen. You know, he, he got the muscle, and they do the his bidding for him. He make a phone call, and they do the hits. You know, that's America. America's the muscle. That's why America about to get took off. Because once America's out the way, you know, then they can feel like then they can set their rulership up. But America, by the great, has to get out the way. Because that's how these other countries even got a little bit of their power. And they about to get took off because they it's got weak. You know, it's got old, it's got decrepit, it's got weak. Through these uh stupid philosophies they try to enact. Uh, that, that mandate weakened Babylon the Great, man. That mandate done weakened the economy. It done weakened the military. And now it's like they, they got like, like uh, chickens with their head cut off, man. It's a bunch of bickering. They not together. They're not unified. It's divided up. That's why these countries, they smell blood in the water. They coming for Babylon the Great, man. They, they like, man, now our time to hit. So uh, let me pull up another preset that proves my point. Let's go to Jeremiah 14, because this is what's about to happen. Check it out. This is Jeremiah 50 and 14. Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her. Spare no arrows, for she have sinned against the Lord. Did you? Let's, let's read that again. Let's read that again. Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her. Spare no arrows, for she have sinned against the Lord. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, they, they put it, man. Hey, everybody round about Babylon about to, hey, they, when they say bend the boat, that's everybody got these uh carriers, these warships, and they bending the boat. It says shoot at her. So, America about to get blasted on, man. These ICBM, intercontinental cruise missiles, nuclear missiles, they're about to hit America. Straight up. The most I told the other country, he gave me a decree. He said, spare no arrows. So all missiles they got, all these nuclear missiles, everything in that arsenal, they're about to shoot at Babylon the Great, you know? Because there's not going to be no missiles in our kingdom. All that's going to be used up. So it's all going to be shot up. And it said, why? For she has sinned against the Lord. So that's why Babylon the Great about to go down, man, because you done sinned against your how about you was shot. You done went against your how about you was shot. You done thumbed your nose at, at the Lord, covered up his true face, uh, covered up his name, you know, changed his name to, to Jesus, uh, made him a, a blonde hair, blue eyed uh, Edomite, you know. Uh, at the same time, you done killed his people like nobody business, you know. 
they slang them when you feel like it, you know, picnics and all that, hanging them, killing them, castrating them, uh, feeding babies to alligators, you know, I can go on, you know, just do a little history. You know, they've always did dealt treacheries with our people. Um, they go against the laws. If you, you know, read the, the laws like Leviticus and Numbers and all of that, Esau is against that. Whatever the most I say do, Esau does the opposite. So they have sinned against the Lord. And, and like Esau at the point where his technology got him feeling himself. He in great pride. He looking like, you know, because he's been, because Yahweh shot and let him rule so long, he think it's because of him that he ruled. He think he got the power like that. So therefore, Yahweh shot got to, hey, come see about him. We got to walk him down, show him like, you know, I let you have that. Now I'm about to spank you, you know, real quick. Using these other nations and using my people. We about to, hey, we about to spoil you. And Esau, Edomites are not going to rule no more. That's why I see now they're trying to butter me up and be nice because they see their L coming. They see it coming. So now they're trying to, like, pull that we all together spirit. And I'm like, no, nah, man, no, nah, no. Nah. Y'all done did wickedness and evil against my people so long. No, 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 no. Now it's time for you to get your judgment. And, <laughs> you know, us, us in this truth in the heavens, hey, we're going to rejoice. When you get that judgment, man. That's why, what's that, uh, Sirach, Ecclesiastes 25 and 7. Uh, it's a happy thing for the Lord to say. Let's, let's go get it, man. While well, I'm quoting it, I don't want to butcher it. Because it's a good thing to see the fall of our enemy. We're seeing it. And, uh, and I'm happy. You know, that, that's something to put me in a good mood. Check it out, we're going to read it. It says, this is uh, Ecclesiastes 25 and 7, also known as Sirach. You know, in the Apocrypha, there be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy, and the tenth I will utter in my tongue. A man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. That's what we're witnessing, Yahshua, the fall of our enemies, which is Esau, Edom, and all these other nations, Ishmael, Moab, all them about to fall, man. So that, that, that's a great thing, a good thing. So... Because really, if you think about it, man, America, Babylon the Great, really is like a big prison. It's a prison for our people, man, to serve out our prison sentence for what, you know, our forefathers did for going off, for serving other gods and not serving Yahweh Shah. So now we're at the point where, hey, we we in a good time. We're at the point where we about to be released. Like, we at the end of this thing. Like, you know, we done served our time, you know, got our commissary, and now we about to get, you know, our release date. So we should be rejoicing in this. Now, we are going to be trying and fire because we are here in the midst of Babylon the Great. Things is going to get real choppy and anticipated. But that's why the Most High, you know, said, come into me. Because if you have the faith and the testimony, the names of Yahweh Bashiach Shah, and he deems you worthy, he's going to protect you when all hell break loose. You'll be safe. He'll feed you, uh, get you in a safe place. Um, if it's in his power, you know, spare your seeds, your household, your household might get spared, you know, things of those nature. You know, that's why this whole book is about salvation. We will be saved. And he's going to preserve you ultimately to get on them chariots. Because once you get on that chariot, then you get your new bodies. Then you get to see your Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah, you know, in that fathership. And then, you know, once we get acclimated, you know, with our Savior, we're going to come back down and we're going to replenish the earth in righteousness. You know, we ain't got to worry about no devil telling us, oh, you, you broke this law, or you can't do that, or, you know, trying to come up against us with his, with his guns. Man, they ain't going to have none of that, man. They're going to be in, in slavery, in subjection. And that's why I say, call her law, Yahweh Shai, for he have heard us and made good on his promise. You know, he, he's about to deliver us. And that, that right there puts me in a very, very good mood. Especially me watching, I'm watching that more close than I am any sports, anything like that. Like Russia is making a move, and it, as I said, all it takes is one little phone call, one missile shot, one gun bust, one soldier die, and it's on the cracking. Because everybody's gonna get pulled into this war, you know. And I, I'm standing now. It looked like who's gonna kick it off is gonna be Russia and, and Babylon the Great. It's gonna be Russia, man. And Russia just trying to get back what's theirs, the land that belonged to them, Ukraine. That that belonged to Russia. He told me I'm taking it back. The only thing where they ain't been to take it back is because America's gave in Ukraine sovereignty and protected them. Now their protection is looking like it's not that strong. He don't care about that. He's like, man, I'm getting it back. If you want to go to war, we can go to war. 
And China done said the same thing to the U.S. as well. Like, you know, I'm taking Taiwan back. If, if you send troops over there and you jump in, hey, hey, we, we got hot ICBM cruise missiles for your butt, man. Them arrows. You know, that's the most high calling. Our, our forefathers, you know, the word missile wasn't way back in the ancient day. The only way our forefathers described these missiles was calling it an arrow. Because they are shaped like arrows, you know. And at the, the bottom of it is they fire. They are bright. You're going to see them suckers at night. So this book is on point. Our book is on point. You know, uh, 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 the doctrine we received from the apostle Elder GMS is on point. We ain't got to go back to the drawing board. Hey, the spirit of the Lord was in them. They got it right. So now all we got to do is stay locked in, stay the course, keep the faith, and keep doing what we're doing. Keep prophesying, stand on the gate, keep them prayers going. Because, hey, it, it's happening, man. It, it is going down. You can't, you know, turn the blind saying it ain't happening. Yes, it is. You know, yes, it is. And I'm like, can't come soon enough. I'm so ready. I'm ready for the kingdom of heaven. I'm tired of living under Esau Edom and his old stupid, wicked, dumb kingdom. The stuff they do just don't make no sense, man. They, they really are foolish people. So with that being said, I hope this has been edifying. You know, shalom, and I'm going to keep on doing what I'm doing. Lord willing, to the next time.